here we are on a rainy spring day in Thunder Ridge. We have all kinds of projects to do outside that need done. We need mulch spread. We need weeds pulled. We need brush hauled. But what we're doing today, since it's a rainy day, is an inside job. And it has to do with this tiny little sack. In this sack are 50 pounds of Vidalia onions. This time every year, the Shriner Organization, the Ararat Shriner Organization, sells Vidalia onions and they sell them as a project to help support the children's hospitals and where the crippled children receive um, treatment for little or no cost to their parents and it's, it's a really worthwhile organization. Um, check it out if you don't know. I'll try to get you a link down below. These onions are super sweet, as you all know. And Vidalia onions are well known for not being a good storage onion. The sweetness factor allows them to go bad quicker. And they just don't last. So my way of making a Vidalia onion last all year round is I cut them up and dehydrate them. When I talk to people about the things I do on the homestead and I say like um, I'm going to dehydrate 50 pounds of onions everybody freaks out. It's like their first choice. And I want to show you how not to freak out doing 50 pounds of onions in a dehydrator. Um, it's pretty easy. The first thing you need to do is you need to have a fun place to sit. And we've got a three season porch nice place to sit when it's a rainy day and I have a nice comfortable chair to sit in and I just get a couple of bags of onions sit over here and a cutting board and a place to work much rather work here than standing up at the kitchen counter this is a big pan to put the waste in and then over at this side of the chair you put it right up here so you can see it we have the heroes of the equation um, you need a few tools when you're on a homestead and buying the biggest stainless steel bowls you can find is one of the things I would highly recommend to everybody. It is wonderful when you're doing a job like this. And the other thing I want to show you is this. This is called a rata knife. They are sharp, sharp, sharp. They hold their edge and it's a paring knife. Normally they have a metal handle. It's small. I told you guys I had really bad arthritis so I have an adapter on it. It's a big spongy soft thing that you can buy online and it helps me to hold my knife a lot easier. Uh, so I'm going to sit down and get started and show you the process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start breaking these onions down and just cleaning the hides off of them. Okay, here's the adversary. This is what they look like when you get them. Um, these are great big onions and you notice they have a hide on them and the first job that I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the skin and I'm going to do what they call top them. So I'm going to get this center core off and tail them which is this piece here and that's my first step. I do not have a tripod so I'm just going to show you this in stages. Okay here we have stage one complete. Um, I've got the onion skinned. If you see I have the root end clipped off and I had a little made a little divot in there to get the core out of the top and I took just as little of the outside coating off of it as possible. I'm going to show you my little pile of onion skins. Um, people save these. You can make um, dye out of them to dye fabric, believe it or not, out of your onion skins. So don't throw anything away in the homestead. It's kind of a weird little deal but that's the way you do it. Um, first onion down so after we get it trimmed like this, we pick it up, turn, and it goes right into the onion pan waiting for the next, the rest of its companions. Um, I'm going to do these onions. I'm going to get a timer out here and show you how long it takes to do 10 pounds of onions, step one. Hope you all can see this. It's 10, 12 a.m. when we're getting started for 10 pounds of onions. On your mark, get set, go. Done with the first batch, done with 10 pounds of onions. This is the pile that I have left of onion skins. 
and I don't have any kind of dyeing projects to do so I have two choices I can either put these in the trash can or I can put these in the compost bin another thing you can do with onion hides too is put them around your um, like broccoli and other coal crops because they stink and you can use them kind of like mulch and it'll help to keep other insects and things away from your okay in addition to all of those onion skins I also have this nice onion bag left over which is a wonderful thing for homesteader um, save these I wash them out with warm soapy water hang them up and let them dry and I can use them to store my potatoes and stuff like that later on in the year or even squash old onion uh, eye water problem so how do you solve that one way is you keep them covered as you work on these onions I keep my little lid on it and it keeps as much of that uh, oil out of the air as possible. The 10 pounds of Vidalia onions figured out to be 12 great big giant onions. So see it didn't take too long. The other secret to not making your eyes water really bad is, um, well first of all Vidalia onions are a little bit sweeter and so they're not as strong and as bitey as like say a yellow onion is. And the next thing is don't make deep cuts. You're trying to save as much onion as possible for your project so you know cut as shallowly as possible. The next step for these little guys is they're going to go into the sink and they're going to get rinsed off real well with some cool water and then we're going to get ready to do the next process. As you watch me do this, you'll notice I'm going to go back and forth between pans. I have this big old roaster pan and then I'm going to put them back into my big uh, stainless steel pan. So these guys are going to go for a little bath in the water and when we come back we'll be at the next step. So here we are. We've got our onions. They've been all through their nice little cold water bath drained so they're nice and clean got all the dirt and stuff off of them from the grower and now we're ready to actually start processing them to get them small enough to dehydrate the first step is I take an onion out of here and I'm just gonna reach one right out of here and put him up on my cutting board and as soon as I get him out I'm gonna put the lid back on to keep the stink out put him up on the cutting board and we get to whacking the first step is I whack it in half then I whack it into like wedges like that and then when I get the wedges done I pick them up and I'm gonna just drop them right over here into my waiting bowl and go back another lid on to keep the stink out we're gonna chop all these onions into the little wedges and I'm gonna try to time that out for you now let's see what time it is Ugh, sorry get out my old lady flip phone so I can check the time keep in mind I'm having to download and chase a four year old around so I've got this is the time is moving on without me actually having work time so okay, here we are starting in the wedging and mark get set go alright these are the last two this is the time Remember, I'm not anybody special. I'm just a little old lady, not anybody with ninja skills. I'm going to take my little cutting board, tump it in with the rest of them. And now in that container, we have 10 pounds of wedged onions. I wedge them like that because my next step, I'm going to use a food processor. Get that lid back on to keep the stink down. I'm going to use a food processor to dice my onions before I dehydrate them. Um, you can slice them, you can dice them, you can do them however you want to do them to put them in the dehydrator. The main thing is you want to make them small and uniform as possible because they dry faster and they turn out better. Um, I have much better luck doing it in the food processor first and then um, they dry out just beautifully. So I'm going to take you along for the next process. Like I said, this is not the only way to do it. This is how I do it. We're ready to start the next process. Um, we're going to do them in the food processor next. Um, remember, this is how I do it. Um, not the only way to do it. This is going to be the stinky part of the process. This is the part that will drive you out of the house. So if there's any way you can have a nice big open window by where you're doing this process, I would highly recommend it. Okay, I've got my food processor set up. I've got my onions conveniently located by them. Okay, this is the big pan to put them in, to catch them in. Um, my food processor has a way to set it up so that 
it will put the food down the chute and right out this chute outside. It will not go down in the, or much of it won't go down in the actual carrier. And that's the way you need to set up your food processor. Follow your manufacturer's directions to see how to do that. Okay, I'm going to try to see if I can do a couple of these here for you, just to show you how we do it and why I wedge them the way I do. First of all, I'm going to take my little lid over here, set it to the side. I'm going to reach down in here and I'm going to get a few wedges. I'm going to just load them in the hopper, put in the little topper, see if I can do this with one hand. I don't know if I can or not. Try to see what I can do here. come through the processor and fall into my pan. Okay, chopping time starting on the little old lady phone is 11 o'clock. Here we go. Let's see how long the chopping takes. Okay, time check. Oops, if I can get this to do it. Open it up. I have more trouble with the little old lady phone. 11.05. Took five minutes to turn this bowl empty. and a whole big bowl of this stuff. Okay, that's a little better. That's my pile of onions. I don't know why it wasn't focusing. I don't know if it's steaming up from the cold air coming in from outside or what. It's about 40 degrees out there. Um, you'll notice that down at the bottom of this container I have some mush. It's the stuff that goes down through the food processor. It's liquid from the onion juice from the onions and also some really finely chopped waste. Um, it is not going to go to waste. I'll show you what we do with this later. Um, right now I wanted to mention also this is a good idea to do with onions anytime and every time. Anytime I buy onions in a big bag of onions get them on sale I'll go all the way through the process to this point dicing them up and everything and then you can package them in a freezer bag and you can have them ready for when you use your recipes and that way because almost every recipe you do you have to chop an onion so if you know about how much onion is in an onion which is about a cup or a cup and a half you can dice it all up pack it up in little bags and have it ready for your recipe and you don't have to chop an onion for every time you cook so it's a good way to do it okay I've taken the top off of this food processor and you see down in here we have got a whole bunch of juicy onion mess. We're not going to waste it. Oh no. We're too homesteadery for that. We're going to pour it in here. I'm going to scrape all the rest of it out. And we're going to let it drain in this colander for a little while. Because there's no sense in trying to dry out something that's too wet. So we're just going to let that drip and drain for a little while. And all the juice is going to pool down here at the bottom. The juice isn't going to go to waste either. I take the juice that's going to drain out of here, looks like this, and I'm going to freeze this into some ice cube trays. Um, then I can put the ice cubes into soups, stews, casseroles, anywhere you need some onion boost. Pretty handy, pretty neat. Okay, there it is. It's going to drain for a little while. This is 11.22 a.m. now. Remember, I've had to chase a four-year-old download these things about every 15 minutes because I can only take a couple clips on this camera. This is a, a regular camera, not a video camera. Um, I've been letting this drain for a while. You see that they're getting fairly dry and I'm getting a lot of juice down at the bottom. Okay, When they get pretty doggone dry, we're going to add them back over here to our collection we've got of the dehydrated or I mean the chopped up onion, minced onion. And then we're going to get ready to start loading up our dehydrator trays. Now I've been a fairly early adopter of a dehydrator. I have a, it is a Garden Master dehydrator. Just a standard one but it's a big size around. Um, I have been using a Nesco dehydrator for probably 20 five years. My first one I got at a garage sale for like five dollars and my daughter's still using it. That year, that old we've been, we have used the devil out of it. Um, I recently got this one just because I was ready for another new one and so 
here we go. When you start putting your dehydrated uh, or your minced onions on the dehydrator, the first tray I found I use the jelly roll tray. And the reason I do is because my dehydrator is one that has the heat on the bottom and blows the air up. I think that they dry a little bit better in my personal opinion just because heat rises and it takes the moisture out of the pan with the with the stuff, but it does leave a mess at the bottom because it'll drip down. So if you use a jelly roll on the bottom tray, you can alleviate that because it kind of catches all the mess and keeps from getting your drying unit wet. I'm not going to put too much on here at a time, but actually a lot more than you'd think. That's what I put like three cups on this tray. I'm going to spread it around, kind of flatten it out like that and then we're going to move it we're going to move it over here onto the dehydrator and get it ready to go I also found out that if I use the lid when I set it down here like that that lid makes a good bottom the next tray is going to be using these they're called a clean -a screen love them they make everything so much easier and so much better so we're going to do the next tray we're going to put onions on there like I said, I've seen people put a little cup over this hole if you want to to keep from dumping stuff down the hole. It does make things easier. I've been doing it for a long time, so like I say, I'm fairly accurate at pouring my onions where they need to go. Just put them in here a little bit at a time. Remember, we're working on 10 pounds of onions, so this is what it's, how they're mincing down and what they're looking like. And you see, they're just kind of little flakes already which I'm trying for onion flakes. If you want onion powder after they're dry, you can run them through the food processor again and it will turn into onion powder. Um, like I said, if you don't want to dehydrate, you could freeze these and it would turn out really good. So I'm going to put the second tray on. Okay, I forgot to do the stop of when this took to fill these up with the timer. Um, I had to go unload the camera again onto the computer. Um, it was like 11.31 when I was completely done. This is the last tray all loaded up and ready to go. I do want to mention to you that um, if you need to make it thicker, make it thicker towards the outside because the outside actually dries faster than the inside does. Um, got this all ready to go. We have the last little scrapings of that pan. I also put in the drainer because there's moisture that collects at the bottom of that pan and I want to get every bit of that onion juice I can to save to freeze into my little onion ice cubes so that I can save that juice because that is some delicious stuff to add to soups. Got the last tray done. We're going to move it over here onto the dehydrator. Just goes right there on the top. Settles down nice and neatly. We're going to put the lid on top. Again, we want to do this as much as possible where it's ventilated. The first time I ever did this, um, please listen to what I have to say because I did it in the house on a rainy day and I did the yellow onions. I'm going to set this at about 135. I'm going to turn her on and let it get going. Inside of a house with the yellow onions and when we got home we couldn't even hardly live in the house. It stunk so bad like onion. So we want to do this in a ventilated spot. If nothing else, buy an open window, put a fan on it, try to get as much of that stinky oniony smell out as possible. The Vidalias are not nearly as bad for that as like I say a regular onion is. Um, but this is where it's going to sit on my porch and it'll probably take about, I'd say about 12 hours to do these trays. Let's see, the 10 pounds made Let's see, one, two, three, four, five trays. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, at this point, I'm going to get the rest of those onions and start working on them. I'm going to start peeling them. I can quarter them up like I did, but if you've cut them, you'll need to refrigerate them until it's time to run them through the processor. You could even put them all the way through the food processor and refrigerate them at that point. And then when your dehydrator opens back up, you can start putting in your batches and um, dehydrating them. So, like I said, this is just a good spot for me to do this. And I'm just going to, I'll let you see what happens when we get all the way done, what they look like. Um, you do have to watch the Vidalias a little closer than a standard onion. The sugar content in them makes them want to caramelize and they will brown up or even get like toasty 
if you don't watch them. So you do have to kind of keep a little closer eye on them, but we'll come back to these when they are finished. Okay, we turned this dehydrator on at about 11.35. It is now 4 o'clock, so we are going to check the progress, see how things are going. Like I said, you got to watch these a little bit, so we're going to open this up. Whoops, crush turned off first, sorry. That helps things a little bit. We can look them over with, see how things are going. You want to check them a little bit and see if you see how they're kind of getting dry here, but yet on this side, they're a little mushy and wet still. Sometimes you might need to kind of move things around a little bit more, spread things out a little bit if you need to. That's possible. Also turning the trays slightly. If you find out you've got a lot of things that are getting drier in one spot, see sometimes it's just because that spot's a little on the thin side. So you might want to spread them out a little bit more. And I just kind of go through and I just check the trays one at a time to see how they're doing. See, so notice this has got their thick spots and thin spots. And you do have to do this with the Vidalias because, like I said, they are really sweet. And if you um, let them go, they will actually kind of burn and get brown. See how it's starting to get kind of brown in some spots? That's because the sugar within the onion itself is caramelizing. They are really a sweet onion, and they do have more trouble with that than other kinds of onions would. Um, this tray, as you notice, is there's not as much on the bottom tray because I usually don't put as much since everything's dripping down on it, and it takes it a little bit longer. Um, at this point, you can rotate the trays. Um, sometimes, because things are pretty much stopped dripping. So I will take this top tray, put it on top. I mean, I have to put the camera down. I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not. If I drop all my onions, I'm going to hear me yell. Okay, I'm going to stick them down here. I'm going to rotate the trays a little bit just to make things dry a little more evenly. So rotate them around. Take a good look at them. Like I said, they're probably about halfway there at this point. And like I told you, they've been on since, um, well, but it's like three hours. So, and while they were doing all that hard work, I had lunch, I had a nap, grandson went home. So see, it's not, this isn't the work part, if you ask me. So we've just checked them, and we're going to turn back on, put the lid on them, and let them go. got everything in the dehydrator and it's going and it's working doing its job just drying these onions out ready for onion flakes I have a dirty bowl a dirty knife a dirty everything here is where you save the time instead of washing this bowl and putting it away and waiting until I get the dehydrator emptied and starting all over again tomorrow I look outside it's still rainy and dreary and yucky. So I'm going to get a bag of onions and I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to do 10 more pounds and 10 more pounds and 10 more pounds and 10 more pounds. Here we are at the end of our project. Um, quite honestly, this is the next morning. Um, these onions, these 10 pounds of Vidalia onions, were finished last night, but I just couldn't be bothered with it. And besides that, I wanted to film it, and I didn't have enough sufficient light to make a good video. So I just turned them off, left them in the dehydrator, and then this morning, I've turned the dehydrator on for just a little bit again. Um, if you have a dehydrated food and you let it sit when it's high humidity like it's been raining lately it will 
start to um, absorb water again so you want to make sure that everything's nice and dry and crisp and so that's where we're at this morning I've got that all set and let's take a peek and see how our produce has turned out okay and there it is I'm trying to get a little bit closer so you can see it um but yeah they're nice and they're crispy here nice and crispy sounding so they're ready to take out of the dehydrator all right, I wanted to move my trays with two hands instead of with one because my arthritis is really flared up this morning. Um, I moved them over to the little sidecar table. I've got it here in my little workstation. And we've got, our, again, again, our gray big stainless steel bowl. And like I said, I use the Dickens out of these things. How we're going to de decant this is we're going to pick it up. We're going to turn it over and just let that little cleaner screen pop out. See if I can do this with one hand, one swollen hand I might add, to get this loose. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe. Hang on. Bad camera work. Just loosen it up off of the tray and I'm going to let the little, you see how I'm just separating the little clean screen from the regular part of the dehydrator. You see why my big bowl's handy? No fiddle fiddling around. Just dump the whole thing off. Got it. Then we have our little clean screen. And if you notice, it's flexible. So the, the onions just peel right off. See that, how it's working? It just comes off really nice and loose. And they just come right off into my bowl. Nice and then you, the screen looks like this when it's done and since it's flexible I can now put this in the wash the hot soapy kitchen water and wash it off comes clean right away at this point I just stick my clean hand down in there and I crunch them all up nice and crispy and then I'm getting ready to put them in the containers and my preferred container is a Gatorade bottle Gatorade bottles are a nice, heavy uh, PET plastic. They have a big opening. You can scrub them out really good. I can put these in the sink. I wash them out with really, really hot, soapy water. I can even rinse them in boiling water if you need to to make sure that they're nice and sterilized and clean. And then they are dried very thoroughly before I put my uh, dehydrated produce in them. And then all it is is a matter of standing it in the bowl and taking my hands and stuffing them in there like that and you just keep going until you get it all full and then you put the lid on the Gatorade bottle is also waterproof and airtight and you can bang it around and it makes a wonderful thing to hold the onions in Okay, so here we are at the end of our little game. Um, the 10 pounds of onions that you see in the bag behind was what we processed. That's how big it was. And it ended up being basically one and a half quarts of the dry onions in the Gatorade bottles. And if you see this, they are nice dry onion flakes. If you want to take that any further down, you can take these onion flakes and run them through a uh, herb mill, coffee grinder, food processor, crush them down and make onion powder. You can make your own onion salt out of them or you can package them up and this jar is going to be a gift for a friend. So it's just a nice thing to do for people. Um, these Vidalia onions now, are the sugar is concentrated in them to the point you can eat them out of hand like candy. I mean they are so sweet. Plus you've taken a product that would normally have a very short shelf life and given it a shelf life of years and years and years as long as you keep it dry, sealed tight and in a cool dark place it'll last a long, long, long time.